Yeah, this is going to go right to mine. Um, I'm set up. What would happen is you'd come to the homepage of Zoom. You just sign in. I'm already signed in. So once you get through that, if you do need help with that, you can talk to me. You go to schedule a new meeting. So that's what we're going to do now is how to schedule an IEP meeting. You just hit schedule a new meeting. We can schedule this. We don't want to say IEP in there. We can just say if we want, we could say JL's meeting. Description, if you want, you could put annual. When is this IEP going on? So let's say this IEP is happening 22nd at, you can say 9.30. AM duration is it an hour long meeting. Do you want it a little longer? If it's a try, maybe it'll take two hours, but you can change the duration right here. Um, it should be set to your computer should be set to Pacific standard time. So just make sure that it is set to the correct time meeting ID. You can let zoom generate it meeting password. It is, um, something that, you can do yourself or you can have them generate it. So if you'd like to generate your own, you can, and you can do that back in your settings and I can show you how to do that. Um, as far as video, you want your host on and participant. You'll be the host of this meeting. Audio, you check both these. That way we can have parent calling in if they don't have access to a computer. Meet Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I'm gonna show you how to sign an IEP digitally from your smartphone. Step one, email the IEP to yourself. I have emailed myself a mock IEP. Step two, open up the page for the signatures. Step three, screenshot that page. Step four, once it is screenshot, go to your pictures. And now it is in your pictures and you can edit it like so, press the edit button, press this little ellipsis up here, and you're going to see this that says markup. Once you press markup, you're gonna see all of these utensils down here. This is what you're going to write with. I recommend using this one. Make it black. Boom. Now enlarge the screen. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Voila, digital signature. Subscribe for more hacks. Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to submit an assignment in Google Classroom. So the first thing you'll do is you'll go to your Classwork tab. You'll locate the assignment that you want to actually turn in. So we're going to turn in this assignment here. By opening up the assignment, you'll click on View Assignment, and then you'll be given the option to either mark as done or sometimes it will say Turn in Assignment. Once you've completed all of the work necessary, make sure you mark as done. If there is an attachment, it will upload that attachment along with any other work that you've completed. And then you'll know that that assignment has been turned in because this will indicate turned in. And then you could also go back into your classwork tab and any assignment that's been grayed out indicates that you have turned it in. So you wanna let your teachers know that your assignments are done by marking as done or turning in the assignment and then verifying that it has grayed out. That will be the way that you let the teachers know that you've done all of your work. Hope this video helps and let us know if you have any questions. And of course, we're talking about this time of COVID-19, where everybody is working at home, including your gen ed teachers themselves. And they're doing theirs, and they're still also prioritizing their kids too. But now it's Zoom classes and Google Classrooms and HyperDocs. And don't forget that Zoom meeting with the principal. And don't forget that Zoom meeting with your PLC. And even if you are in that same Zoom meeting with your gen ed teachers, with the principal, they're not, the last thing they're worried about is talking to you privately about how John, little Johnny or little Jose is doing. So we're all working from home. And with that, this is a great opportunity for you guys to also rearrange and reorganize your IEPs themselves. So I'm going to show you how to do that with the help of Google Docs. And 
let me just say, I'm not reinventing the wheel. It is true that SACE does provide an IEP at a glance that is supposedly really easy to print out. But as you notice, and you look at the page itself, it's so wordy once again. It's just like looking at a mini version of the IEP and as great as SACE is, this is a little, sometimes a little too much for a gen ed teacher when all they just want is the most simple information about your kids. And speaking of that, that's why it's important to do this kind of document because we wanna think about what do we really want our teachers to know about our kids? What are the most important things we want you to know about? Or what do we want them to know the most about the IEP? The answer is, not hand them the entire IEP. But what are the most important parts of the IEP that we need the gen ed teachers to know about in less than five seconds? And, I'll, and you can pause the video and think about that. And then replay it when you think you have the answers. Okay, so what are the most important things? And of course, it's debatable, and you can argue about this. The most important things that teachers really want to know are their eligibility, their goals, their services, maybe a behavior support plan, and what are the deadlines of those IEP meetings?